Okay, hi guys. I'm going to help you learn to read the treble clef and the stave. I know some of you have done a really good job. Also, some of you are still finding it a little bit tricky. Okay, so I'm going to go through it really, really steadily and hopefully more of you will be able to get there. So, the stave are the five lines. Okay, and the five lines also have four spaces in between them. Okay. So here are our four spaces, one, two, three, four, and we've got five lines, one, two, three, four, five. Now I've taught you the rhymes for both. You have face is in a space. So this one is face, F, A, C, E. And if it helps, I'll number them, one, two, three, so F A C E and these ones the lines I give you that mnemonic every good boy deserves football every good boy deserves football and that was one two three four five every good boy deserves football now, wherever the circle is, tells you if you need to use face or if you need to use every good boy deserves football. If the circle has got a line through it like that, you can see there's a line in the middle, then you need to use the rhyme every good boy deserves football. And if the circle is in between two lines like this, then you use face because you can see it's in a space. This one's not in a space. This one's got a line through it. Okay. So face is in a space. Every good boy deserves football. All right. And you always start at the bottom. So one is always here. One, every good boy deserves football. So I'm going to draw five lines here and we're going to work out a few of the notes. Five, there's my stave. Okay, so I'm going to draw a note here. So the first thing we have to decide is, do we use face or do we use every good boy deserves football? Well, let's have a look. Is it in a space or has it got a line through it? Well, I think it's got a line going through it. Can you see? So that means we need to use every good boy deserves football. So we start on the bottom line, we put our pen here, every good boy. And because that line there is in the middle, that must be a B. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to put one here. So let's remind ourselves, is it in a space or has it got a line in the middle? Let's have a look. Well, there's no line in the middle, so it must be in a space. So we're looking for face. So here we go. First space is here, F, A. So that has to be an A. It's in that second space. One, two, F, A. There we are. So let's try one more. I'm going to put a note here. So we'll make the decision, is it a space or is it a line? We can clearly see there is a line going through there. We can clearly see that. So, every good. So, it's the second line, it's a G. And we have made back B, A, G. And that's how you read the music using the two rhymes. Now stay with the video because we're going to go onto the computer and I'm going to show you some of the words and we'll see if you can work them out. All right. So here is the computer version of what I've just shown you. So every good boy deserves football and those are the five lines. 
and then face is in the space. So we have to make that decision. Now the two rounds are up here in case you forget them. So the first decision, is there a line in the middle of the note? Yes. So we're going to use every good boy deserves football. So we start at the bottom, every good boy. So that is in the B space. So I'm looking for a line. There is no line in the middle of that note. It's inside the space. So I use face. F, A. It's in the second space. F, A. So that's got to be an A. And then, again, we're looking. There's a line in the middle. So we're back to every good boy deserves football. Every good boy deserves. So that is a D for bad. I'm going to show you one more and then you're going to have a go by yourselves. So, every good boy, because there's a line going through it, face, F-A-C-E, a line every good boy deserves. So we get the word bed. Right, your turn. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Off you go. Okay, so the first one, there's a line in the middle. Every good boy. Second one, in a space, F, A. And the last one, in a line again, every good. So you should have got the word bag. And to be fair, it should be this quick. You should make that decision, right? There's a line, every good boy. There's a space. F A. Okay, should be really that fast for you now. So let's try another one. Little hint, these two are the same. So once you know that one, you know that one, it's not going to change. Okay, here we go. So it's in a space, F-A-C-E. And these two are on that second line, every good. So it's got to be G and a G, and you get the word egg. Okay, let's go with a tiny bit harder, because I know you guys are really clever. Let's try this one. So I'll give you a little bit longer, see if you can work out the four notes and the word. Okay, so the first one, it's got a line in it, so every good boy. It's got a line, every. It's in a space, F-A. It's in a line, every good boy deserves. And you get the word, bead. And we're going to try one more today. I'm going to give you this one. Off you go.
Okay, so it's in the space, the top space. F-A-C-E, faces in a space. And these three, they've all got a line. So every good boy deserves, every good, every. And you get the word edge. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of composition, okay? I'm not sure if you've done any on your P-bone yet, I suspect not, but you did do some with me over the last couple of years, so it's just a little bit of a refresher, a little bit of a reminder, and then we're going to extend it, okay? So, you're going to need your whiteboard and your pen, we're going to just practice drawing a few things, and then uh, away we go. So, the first thing you need to be able to draw is that treble clef. I'll just remind you of the symbol. Oh. Oh no, my pen doesn't work. Ah! Let's find another pen. Okay, we've got another pen. Here we go. So, uh, the travel clef. That's the travel clef, if you remember. And it's at the start of every line of music that you play on your P-bone. The travel clef is not a note. I don't pick up my instrument and start playing that. It just tells me that the notes that I'm going to write next to it are for a high instrument. And obviously the P-bone is a high instrument because it's quite small, so we can play all of these notes. If I were to pick up a trombone though, I wouldn't be able to play these notes because the trombone plays the low notes and they use a different sort of clef. So the treble clef is for the high notes, all right? So just to remind you how to draw on, the number six, put a little hat on it and then you go all the way down and do a little flick. You remember those? I'll show you one more time. And number six, a little hat on it, all the way down, and do a flick. Okay, so you can just practice uh, a few of those on your board, just spend 30 seconds or so. So you can pause the video, and we're back in. Here we go. So, we've drawn our travel class. So we need to set up our music. So, to start with, we're going to draw one line across. And we draw one treble clef at the start. There. Now the musical notes we're going to use today, we're going to use a crotchet. It's worth one. Our minims. Worth two. Our quavers. If you remember they're worth a half each, so you need two. Half and a half make one. We're going to use a dotted minim. And that's worth three beats, if you remember, three from off. And we're also going to use the crotchet rest. There it is. And that's worth one silence. Okay, hopefully you remembered those symbols and you've played them on your P-bone as well. All right. If not, don't worry, I'll be able to help you through it. So, um, we write a number four at the top and a number four at the bottom to tell us that there are four beats in a bar. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And you start putting the notes inside the line. So, I draw a crotchet, and I draw my minim, and I draw one other crotchet. In fact, I might turn those into quavers. There we are. There. Just put that into the middle. Now I've got to four. One, two, three, four. So I have to put in my bar line. That musical full stop. Okay. Hopefully you guys can remember, you have done this for two years with me, uh, which is just hopefully a bit of a reminder for you. 
So the important thing is each bar adds up to that magic number of four. Okay? I'm going to draw another bar, so I might use the dotted menu. That's worth three beats. And I might use a crotchet rest. And that's worth one. Three and one make four. So I put my line in. Uh, and then my right. two quavers, two more quavers, and a mini. And again, it's made four, so I can put my line in. All right. I then get the drum, because you're going to be using drums for the next few weeks. Here it is. And using your frogs and your tadpoles, you're going to play the line. Okay. So, frog. Two frogs, tadpole. Three frogs, shh. Tadpole, tadpole, two frogs. Now your music teacher might be teaching you tea, coffee. If you can remember that, use tea, coffee. It's entirely up to you. But I taught you frog, tadpole, two frogs. I taught you those. So I'm going to go with the ones that I taught you. Okay, but whichever you find easiest. So I'm going to play my drum. Uh, just to remind you, the two frogs, two frogs, two frogs. Hit on two, and the frogs move forward. And the same for the three frogs, three frogs. So it's where three beats, one, and then two bounces, two, three. Okay? Again, it should just be a reminder. So from the beginning, frog, two frogs, tap, pop, three frogs, shh. So I've played my composition. So I'm going to let you guys write a little composition like that. It shouldn't take you long. Play it, and then we're going to extend it a little bit. All right. So pause the video in here, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. So I'm hoping that that went really well, and you were able to pick that up very quickly because we have done it before. It's a bit of a refresher. Now, something we haven't done before is changing this top number. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to draw my treble clef. And this time, instead of putting a four at the top, I'm only going to put a three. So there are only three beats in a bar and not four. So this time, the magic number has changed. When I get to three, I have to put my bar line in. Okay, so I'll just show you. One, two, three, bar line. That is worth three all by itself, bar line. Quavers, quavers, crotchet, one, two, three, bar line. Crotch your rest, minute, one, two, three, bar line. So now I've got three beats in the bar, and I'm going to play it. Frog, two frogs, three frogs, tadpole, tadpole, frog, shh, two frogs. And it adds a different feel to the music. I'll play it on my drum. When the music's got three beats at the top, it's called a waltz. And that's the waltz that they use on Strictly Come Dancing when they go round in the circle together. It's called a waltz because there's only three beats in a bar. And it's spelt W-A-L-T-Z, a waltz. So this time, I want you to draw your line. Oh, just with that. Draw your line and see if you can do three beats in a bar. Okay? So... Pause the video here and I'll see you in a little while. Okay, hopefully those three beats went really well. But I wonder what happens if we change that number again. So I'm going to draw another line up, up a little bit here. There we go. There we go. Now this time we're going to change that top number. 
We could go two, we could go five, we could go six. I'm thinking five. I want five beats in a bar. So now the magic number has changed. It's no longer four. This here, called the time signature, has told us the magic number is now five. So I could write a dotted minute and a minute, and that would make five. I could write a minute, a minute, and a crotchet, and that would make five. I could do ten quavers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I draw three bars of music, each adding up to five. So it now goes like this. So you can change this number here and it will affect how many beats are in a bar. I'm going to give you a choice now. You can either have two beats in a bar, three, five, six, or seven. So it's now your choice. You can put the top number to one of those and make sure your bars add up and then play it on your drum. You can then, once you've finished it, swap with a friend and you'll be able to play theirs. But the important thing is you check and make sure that their bars are accurate and add up to the top number in their time signature. Okay, so have some fun guys and I will see you next week.